And yeah. if it's not, then maybe you should try to remove that personal truth out of the equation and just stick to the universal truths. And, but that's hard to do because a lot of people don't even know the difference. I don't, look, I don't care if you're liberal or conservative or anywhere in between. People have their opinions. And man, there are people that are really believe in their opinions. They're willing to do extreme stuff. With this topic, because of the nature of its relation to meaning of life, if you will, you know, you ran into a problem in the Pentagon that, I mean, you described it as like mind blowing to you that this would ever happen. And it's mind blowing to me too, which is like with the quote unquote Collins elite. So you at some point within a tip growing as a hub within there, you started to run into people where you, you didn't, the way you described it in your book is that you, you didn't necessarily know who they were. They almost operated silently where there was a large contingent in this 22,000 person fucking place, the Pentagon, that had their biblical beliefs dictate how they wanted to handle something like this, which was really sure. in a lot of ways to say, don't handle it. And I believe there was, there was one guy who you had previously respected who at some point and you still know, respect, by the way. I yeah, still respect that person. Okay, so he pulled you aside at one point and said, Lou, you're getting into demonic shit here. Have you read your Bible lately? And you're looking at him as an intel guy whose job is national security going, I'm sorry, my Bible? Right. Like, the, do you understand why at home this seems wild to someone like me or a lot of people listening that, like, a religious belief is going to... Oh, gonna... brother, don't look now, but when's the last time you pulled a dollar out of your pocket? What's it say in there? And God we trust. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I hate to break it to you, but you know, a lot of a lot of our country was based on certain moral principles and and even religious values. Um, that's a fact. You know, you, there's a reason why we have a national cathedral, right, and things like that. It doesn't that's not a bad thing. You know, this country is it's it's okay to have faith in this country. In fact, I I am a man of faith. Um, I don't wear my religion on my sleeve, and I'm very personal about it. But people know when you read my book, I was, I was raised Jewish. That's, that's, that's the way I was raised. I went to Hebrew school and wore a um, and on my father's side, they were, they were Catholic. Um, so my mother's side, she chose to raise me Jewish. Um, I don't have a problem with faith. In fact, I think faith is important. It gets people sure. through a lot of things. What I have a problem with is when people overlay their faith on a national level security issue. Now, is it that strange that that happens? No, we have we have national prayers all the time that our presidents lead, right? So faith is important in our country, and I'm not blaming anybody if they believe that these things are demonic or they're anti-Christian. And by the way, I don't want to villainize the Christians either because it's not a Christian issue. Yeah, neither am you know? I. By the yeah, way, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got it. But but I guess I want to make clear that look, extremism by any other word is still extremism. Whether it's Muslim extremism, Christian extremism, Judaism extremism, extremism is extremism. We can all agree on that. My and that's my concern. It's when people that are in the government are are exercising their views in a way that's unilateral without allowing other people to be part of that conversation. That is a problem for me. Now, you I've have I believe faith is great to have, and if it if it's a moral compass for you, fantastic. But I don't think that we have the right to impose our religious views in a decision process over other people who may not share that. Look, there's two. This is I've, I. I often try to explain to people there's really two types of truths in the world. Because people say, oh, there's only one truth. No, that's not true. There's actually two types of truths in the world. There is a universal truth like gravity, right? Yep. Affects us all the same. And there's a personal truth. The personal truth is like religion or politics, right? It can be just as truthful to you as gravity, but it might not be to him. It's a personal truth. And it may not be backed by the evidence. And it might not might or might not be backed right. by the evidence. And so we have to understand what we can't do is apply a personal truth in a universal decision. A universal truth like gravity, yes. But you cannot, this is why, whether it's political or religious or anything else, a personal truth should never be be used in a decision that affects affects more than yourself. And this, it's hard to do. It's hard to do because you think you're doing the right thing. You think everybody feels that way and everybody's like you, but they're not. And that's what we have to avoid. This is part of that human experience again, right? This yes. Is, we, we're, we're looking through a lens that say, well, this is my personal truth and it's a universal truth. Well, is it really though? I mean, it's a personal truth, but is it really a universal truth? And yeah. if it's not, then maybe you should try to remove that personal truth out of the equation and just stick to the universal truths. And, but that's hard to do. Because a lot of people don't even know the difference. 
I don't, look, I don't care if you're liberal or conservative or anywhere in between. People have their opinions. And man, there are people that are really believe in their opinions. They're willing to do extreme stuff because their personal truth they think is a universal truth. Man, and they do things that – um, you know, don't think for one second somebody who, who – I hate to be crude here, but burns himself alive in protest. That's, that's a universal truth for them, even though for us it may be a personal truth. I mean they are willing to give their lives for it, right? Right. Um, so – we have to understand that, um, and, and, and in governments, no different. Religions, no different. You know, where where personal truth becomes a universal truth. That's the reason why ISIS felt the way they did, because you know they think, well, the whole world needs to be the way. This is a universal truth, and I'm not I'm not bashing on anybody who's Muslim. Most of my friends were Muslim in college. But extremism again is extremism. Whether yes. it's Muslim extremism, Christian extremism, Judaism, you know, doesn't matter what it is. extremism. That's right. It doesn't matter what it is. And then you have governmental extremism, and that's also a problem. How much did they impact? How much was that a, a constant thorn in your side with, as it pertains to actions that could or could not be taken by ATIP? You know what? There was some people. I won't say the person's name. There was another individual that was part of the uh, Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence, who's very well known, very vocal about his personal views, religious views, and he made decisions based off of it. Um, you know, I again, it's one of those things. It it didn't it didn't affect us, other than maybe for funding. Um, but I did not I did not feel day to day that there was this pressure by them. It was, we got up to a certain point and they kind of said, stop here. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, okay. And we didn't, we didn't stop. So, um, you know, other than a curiosity of saying, wow, that's interesting. I actually came face to face with one of these guys. Um, it did not, I don't think it really impacted. Uh, now there's other people in ACIP that will probably violently disagree. Like, oh man, these are the ones, these are the guys that created such a headache for us. And they did. They did. They, they, I mean, I, I think that story will probably come out at some point. They they did make our life hell for a while, ironically enough, right? <laughs> 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 but um, it, uh, it it didn't it didn't affect me that much personally. Well, one of the arguments a lot of people who may be purely on the religious side make is that you know they'll point to the fact that we have no physical evidence of this stuff. It just leaves a mark, so it's a demonic creature, and you know. Look at Leviticus ten fifteen. It'll tell you that's why that hole's right there in in, in the wheat field or whatever. But you but talk isn't religion itself? What what facts are they basing it in other than scripture? I mean, religion itself exactly. takes faith. Exactly right. Religion itself is belief in the supernatural, whether you like it or not. Yes, now, and and it's not a bad thing. It's just it is. It and is. So there's no evidence that you have right now. It's a story that someone written down, and you decide to accept it as truth. But and by the way, that's a personal truth, right? That you feel is a universal truth. But at the end of the day, you don't have evidence. You weren't there. You didn't that's see the right. parting of the waters. You didn't see the miracles and the and the and the water into wine. You weren't there. Agreed entirely. And to your point that you brought up early in the conversation, it can exist on the other side of this with a religion and UFOs or something, saying like, "Oh, were you there in Virginia in '96?" That's right. You know what I mean? That's right. So, when which by the way, can I? Can you make a really good point please? here, yeah. which is I think is something I've never really addressed. If we're not careful with this UAP topic, if it hasn't already started to, it could become a religion, and we need to avoid that. Oh, it has started. Duh, I hope not, it, because that is that that is not the intent of these conversations, and it should not be. It should not be a religion, and I am concerned that in 20, 30, 40 years, 100 years, 200 years from now, it could very well be a religion, and it yeah. should not be a religion. Yeah, Lou, I, 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 think it, I think it already has become that way, and I think you're actually a... I guess like unwitting guinea pig with that, unfortunately, because again, you talked about being the messenger with, you know, just delivering a message here. And there's people who view that as prophetic. On the other end of it, there's people that also view that as whatever the opposite is, you know, like the devil. <laughs> so when I, when I look at you, this is, this is a good time to go into this, to, to really address like head on where you're coming from. In the past, episode 151, I had Ron James in here, who's talked with you before mm -hmm. for his documentary. And then episode 179, I had a Nick Pope. I think like three hours into Nick Pope's, we talked about yours. Nick is another guy who comes from government or whatever. And in, in these conversations and in some others, a point where I've been critical of you is based on the words that you've said yourself in the past and actually said to me before we, we were on air today, which is that, you know, this, this is a fact, like you are an Intel guy. Right. So I always joke and go, all right. I am. I'm, I'm like, all right, Fed, like what do we got right here? Right. 
But online, you see two things. You either see people who are like, no, he's been sent by God, you know, not literally, God, God himself to deliver the great word of Jesus, UAP. Don't say that, man. And, then, oh, God. and then you have people on the other side who are going, who are like, you know, abolish every three letter agency. This is our scumbag fed coming out here and doing whatever. Yeah. I was more in the middle in the sense that I'm like, okay, maybe he just really is a part of an op and he's read in on things that I'm not. So maybe there's a good reason for that, but I don't fucking know. Mm -hmm. So my job is not to sit here therefore and believe what he says, because again, he's worked in the government and you know, it could be like, if this is a topic I'm interested in, like I am in UFOs, UAPs, he may be saying things that are not true. Maybe for a good reason, mm -hmm. maybe for a bad reason too. Maybe you're a bad guy, Lou, right. but like, I don't know this now. I see three doors with you. I'm going to – maybe there's like five, but we're going to put it down to three. Number one is, you know, let's call it like the Stephen Green Street door. He's completely full of shit. He's making it all up. There's no record of anything. And I disagree with Stephen on, on some of the evidence that he's, on our, that he's uncovered there. But he's like kind of the, the heel to it, right? He's the opposite. The second door is you're – either mostly telling the truth or like almost all the truth. Maybe there's some things that, you know, you reviewed the evidence and you got it wrong, but like you're out here and you're actually giving all the information and it's in a purely kind of benevolent way, like you've said, where you feel like you have a moral duty to tell people things that they have a right to know, that humanity has a right to know to say nothing of the United States of American citizens. The third door is it's a mix. And the third door could be that it's like, you know, and this is a strong word to use, but it could be like some sort of psyop where, let me just paint a picture here. You guys on the back end, you know, a 22 year intelligence veteran, if you're still in a 29 year intelligence veteran, you have access to such crazy information that you have been able to simulate how society may handle this information if it was given to them to the point that you are able to see using all your great tools back there. They're like, oh, this could cause ontological shock or an existential crisis if we just dump this on people. Therefore, someone like a Lou Elizondo, someone like a Chris Mellon, someone like a David Grush could be sent out there to reveal some truths in the midst of other stuff that might not be true or more, more likely revealing truths to make it sound really important when, it, when in reality the crazier shit is over here and you want to, I don't know, limited hangout, get people away to focus on this. So when you look at these three doors, obviously the first one you're going to disagree with, which is that, you know, oh, loose full of shit, his career wasn't real. Yeah. But when you look at the other two doors, could you see why people might make the argument on door three there? I can see why people see all three doors. That's, that's, and there's more doors than that. I, mean, I can I can tell you the door that I, that I that I think I'm in. Okay, you know, let's but, hear that. Uh, but it's 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 a little different. Um, first of all, let me put cards on the table. If you ask me to choose between national security and disclosure, like real national security, I will always choose national security. I've never made any bones about it. I love my country and I will protect and defend this country. Period. Full stop. Um, secondly, um, I want government accountability. That's what I want whether it's with this topic or another topic. There is a right way and a wrong way to do things. I am very concerned, and it's probably because of my old generation, based upon the previous studies, that some people can find this information disruptive, okay? What we call catastrophic disclosure. I don't want that. I want constructive disclosure. I want to tell the American people, let them have whatever they can have legally up to that point that they can't have it anymore. But that's not my decision to make. All I can do is continue to try to push for it. Ultimately, it's the govern government's decision to do that. And I won't override the government. I won't do it. I won't, I'm, I'm, I've made it very, very clear. I am not trying to hurt or disrupt our government. I'm trying to help it. It's backed itself into a corner for 70 years plus, potentially, for decades. And now we're at a point that people have the lowest level of faith and confidence in our government and our institutions. Why? Because we haven't been honest with the American people. Oh, the, the Pentagon never lies, right? Unless you talk about the Pentagon Papers, unless you talk about, you know, Iran-Contra, unless you talk about the Afghanistan withdrawal. I mean, we, we haven't been. And our government has done some terrible things to people in the past. Look, look at the syphilis experiments. I mean, oh, yeah. We let people die, man. I mean, that's... Die. The government killing people it would yeah. never happen. <laughs> yeah, right. So, you know, my, my point being is that the government hasn't always been necessarily looking at the best interests of the American people. But this is a topic, I think, where 
I always believe that, that, that America can handle the truth. I think America deserves the truth. And I think there's a right and wrong way to have the conversation. And I, I, I want us to have a conversation, like I said, both from a national security perspective, but then there's the other part of the conversation that affects everybody differently and yet equally, right? Whether it's philosophically or psychologically or sociologically or even theologically. My hope is that the American people can have the conversation for themselves and at that point, make the decision what it means to you. And then if at the end of the day, you guys say, yeah, great, meh, go get a Big Mac, fine. But at least you had the opportunity yes. to have that conversation, right? You can then you make that decision for yourself. And at that day, I go, I will work at Walmart. I'm cool. No sweat. Done. But at least be able to have the conversation. That's what I want to see happen. That is the door I am in. And yes, I am still very loyal. Yes, I will still defend my country and work for my government if asked to and when asked to. But it's not an either or. It's like, oh, well, since he does that, he must be not for the people. That's bullshit, man. That's 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 yeah. that's a that is a that is a you we are creating a a fake narrative. We're creating a binary solution that's this is not a binary thing. It's not either or. Either you you're loyal to the government or you're loyal to the American people. It shouldn't be that way. You should be able to be loyal to both. That's what you should be. And it can be that way, and that's what it used to be, and that's what it should be again. Because remember, government for the people by the people. It's not this big monolithic thing there that's, oh, there's government, then there's a people. Because if that's the case, then, man, we're lost. We're done. This is then, you know what, forget society. We'll go move to Canada or something because that's not the way our government was supposed to be. People died in wars. We fought revolutions so we could have that power. So the people made the decisions. And you have a representative government that are interested in, in, the, in, the, in the interest and the will of the people. This is my – we are going to lose the whole – thing. If we don't recognize that, it's it'll be gone. And then everything that everybody's doing is going to be a waste. This is my concern. And I know what revolution is because my family came from it. And people don't realize that. And all these little nitnoids out there in the Twitter sphere who armchair quarterbacks who've never served their country, never served a day in their life doing anything other than being selfish and doing something for themselves have no freaking clue what's actually going on. And they create drama. They, they're not, they're not, interested in the drama. They manufacture the drama. They're actually out there wanting the drama. And then they watch how it goes down. Oh, look, look, I made an impact. Someone made a comment. You know, that is, that is not my focus. That's why I don't deal with it. I don't care about it. My focus is on this type of conversation. This is a national level conversation. And by the way, it's not just with UAP. You can see it right now. Look at the two people we have that are, that are, that are vying for president. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Now, I'm not going to say bad or good about either one, but let me ask you this. Is there anybody else probably, maybe, kind of, sort of, Literally who could everybody. be qualified? Yeah. yeah. Right? Is that really, really, really America's yeah. best? No. You know, or are we just, uh, well, you know what, I'll go ahead and compromise with, you know, that person because that one over there I hate just a little bit more. Right. You know? And so, and, and we see this all the time. And then we see the active pitting against each other. There are people out there that are these agent provocateurs that thrive off of it. You know, wouldn't it be great like if- Like online, you're saying? Uh, everywhere, even in the media, mainstream media. Wouldn't it be great if a president can candidate came out and said, you know what? I'm not going to say anything bad about my, my uh, opponent. In <laughs> fact, my opponent would probably make a damn good president. But let's, let me tell you where we differ. This is my perspective on how we should fix things. And then the other person said, well, this is how, how I think we should fix it. Imagine that. That'd be nice. Instead of just throwing, nah, nah, he said, she said, he said, she said. Which is all it is. Which is all it is. That's all it is. And it's to the point where we think it's normal now. It's like a Super Bowl, my team versus your team. It's not a, it's not yes. a, a Super Bowl, man. This is life. This is our country. It's not us versus you. We're all in this shit together, man. And so forgive me for being emotional about this, but but this is, this is what drives me. And when people try to put in a... A false narrative or try to, you know, well, Lou must think this or Lou must think that. You know what? Think for yourself. Don't don't worry about what Lou thinks. It doesn't matter what Lou thinks. What matters is the facts and the details and then make your decision for yourself. Don't be lazy. Right. Do your research, right? Understand what's actually happening here. And and don't expect some person to give you a sound bite because now we watch the media. Not only do we want to know the news, but we want to want, we want to know even what to feel about it, right? So what do we do? We turn into our little echo chamber, depending on what side of the aisle we're on politically, and we watch our That's shows. Right. And we're not willing to watch. Oh, I don't like them; they're biased. 
hey, don't look now, dummy. So are you. <laughs> you know, yeah. how about expand your horizons and look at other sources of information and start thinking for yourself. That is what this country used to be. There used to be a point where you could get on the news. You had no idea the political affiliation of any of the reporters because it was just the facts. That was a nicer world. I got you Walter know? Cronkite up in the corner up there because Absolutely. that was a better world to live in. in well, that, that was an honest world to live in, even when we were doing dishonest things, right? And this is my concern. This is my concern with, with where we are now as a country. Hey guys, if you haven't already, please be sure to share around this episode on social media and with your friends, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit. It's all a huge help and I appreciate all of you who have been doing that each week. And this is why it frustrates me so bad because ultimately at the end of the day, my focus is not the UFO community. It never has been. It's on the other 99.9% .9 of the population that's never even considered this topic seriously. That's my focus. And through this, we, maybe we can have a bigger conversation about what? Accountability, transparency, and anti-corruption. That's really what I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to pursue here. This is why this topic, this is just one example. It's a big one, a really big one. But this is just one example of things we got to fix in this country. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.